All right, just look at me or the camera. You All right. Thanks, man. All right, we'll start from the beginning. You were recruited, um, signed late at the U when you finally were going to come. What do you remember from that recruitment process and finally deciding to come to UM? I remember that um, University of Miami only had a few scholarships. And with that few, they had to be real strategic with the people they get because they want to get the program back on top. And we was waiting on my test score to come in because of the new sliding scale, and they held the scholarship for me. So that meant even more, the fact that they only had 12, everything had to be just right, and they held one for me. So I knew that this was a place for me to be. What was the locker room like when you came in as a freshman? The locker room, the locker room was, it, it, it was a lot of excitement in that locker room. You, you finally, you get to understand what it's like to, to be a hurricane once you walk into that locker room, you know, and, and the locker room, it, it created that bond that we have like none other because it was 12 of us and we had to go against everybody else that was on the team, you know, and the, and the, and the rookie class, you know, it's usually 25, usually 25 players and it was only 12 that year. And so that 12 had to be real tight because we had to stick together. We had to, had to kind of earn our keep. You come in and you guys name yourselves the 2Gs. How did that come about? Well, the 2G click came from the fact that we were all supposed to be graduating in the year 2000. You know, we came in in 96 and we know 2000 was the year that we all supposed to graduate unless somebody red shirt or somebody leave early. But that's where the 2G click came from. We, we, we stuck together no matter where we went. And that right there was the turning point of everything. The 2G click was formed. And from then on, we we somewhat recruited the younger players that came in every year, certain ones that kind of fit the mold and that had that dog in them. And that's where the whole school started turning around right there. How did the 2G, that 2G click, you guys were the young guys. There were a lot of older guys in that locker room, but you guys took over that locker room. You guys led that locker room. I think the fact that we had to stick together. It was only a few of us. And then everybody, you know, everybody had heart. You know, you came in with that group, you knew that you had 12 people that was going to jump in that ring with you or do whatever you had to do at, at any point in time. And that, that built the bond to where no matter where we went, you would see at least seven or eight of us, or maybe nine, 10, sometimes 12 of us. And that right there became a force within itself because as the, the older players, you know, they weren't clicked up as that. They were, they were older, but they weren't clicked up like the 2G click because everywhere we went, we were all we had. And so we became a force to be reckoned with in our own locker room. And then plus we wanted to compete, you know, anytime we had a chance to compete, you know, we would get out there and we, our thing was to try to show up one of the older players and and then we earned their respect, you know, and they, they respect that. And that's when the program started getting getting everything back that it used to have, that uh, all everything that you hear about when you talk about the University of Miami, you know, that's what we, we, we wanted to be there. Two Gs versus the Deuce Ones. The Deuce Ones come in and you know they they form their own bond, but still a one locker room. You're still one team. But what, what was that sort of little rivalry within the locker room? Nah, it was actually good because they were a byproduct of us. You know, they came in, they saw the way we was doing it, and they they came in with the same mindset. They wanted to complete compete. You know, they wanted to get out there and show what they were capable of doing. And they came in and they did their thing. You know, and it was more of them than us, but. We, we had already got there and, and we represented kind of showed a lot, a lot of them the way to go. The running backs, you guys were a tight group. You had Coach Salvinger as your, as your coach. Talk about that unity, that, that tightness that you guys had. There's only one rock, so you're competing against each other, but at the same time, you're a tight group. Yeah, we were a tight group because everybody had to push each other. You know, you understand you only get one chance to run that ball, you know, and if you blow it, you're gonna have to sit down. You know, you can't you can't take an injury, you can't take nothing. You know, if you get hurt, the thing around there was like you're bad and the next man up, you know, and that's the thing that 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 push you to even be greater than you actually anticipated because of the fact that you know that you only had so many times to touch that ball and when you got that ball it actually meant something. You know, you get a lot of schools, they get people that get the ball for twenty times, thirty times. With us it was only so many times you're going to carry that ball. So it had to mean something to you. What about the, just the competition between you guys? You were going up against James Jackson. You had Najee Davenport also in the backfield. 
when you first came, there's Daryl McMillan. What, what was it about that competition between you guys? Well, you got to compete. You know, you got if you want to stand out, you want to be somebody, you got to go compete every day. And it's, you try to see the first one that break. And you make sure that you're not the one that break. And you're going to go out there and give everything you can. And hopefully at the end of the day, you're the one that's still standing. What do you remember from that five and six season? The five and six season, it was it was a learning process. You know, it was a lot of things that was going on, and we was just trying to get the program right. You know, and we knew that, hey, with with a season like this, we we got to do better. We had to put in more time. We had to do everything that we could possibly do to get it to get it back to where we wanted it to be. That Baylor game, Santana remembers sitting on the bench with you at the Baylor game, and you telling him, when I get in this game, I'm going to show everyone. I'm going to show everyone. What do you remember from that Baylor game? That was almost a breakout for you. Well, that, that, that was a game when, you know, you're sitting there and it's your first time getting a chance to actually get out there and play, and, and you put in all that work. We, Santana, know we worked so hard that, that off season, and, and you just got to wait on your opportunity. So when while at that game, you know, sitting there, just waiting, waiting for your chance, you know, you're just sitting there saying, man, I can't wait, and you just go over this thing over and over in your mind the night before, the week before, and when you finally get that chance, you don't freeze up. And everything that I said I was going to do, you know, I went out and did it, you know, because that was the thing that I believed in. I knew it from the hard work that I put in. And there was no way that I wasn't going to go out there and be successful. In 98, you guys go up to Syracuse, the Dome, and get blown out to one of the worst losses in the program's history at the time. What, what do you remember from that game? The, you had a motivational speaker before the game telling you, to look down at your shoe, you had your ring size written on your shoe. After the game, like the, the locker room was a little chaotic, players upset, coaches upset. What do you remember about that game? That game was crazy. You know, like everything that could have went bad went bad. You know, it's one of those things that that one thing you never would have thought ha thought of happening. And once they got momentum, they went to roll and they just rolled over and we just collapsed and everything that could have possibly went wrong, it went wrong and it it's probably the thing that, that kind of built us up because of the fact that we went through all that and at the end of the day, it still was just us. You know, we all had to look at each other in the mirror and every mistake that we made, every, every problem that we had, it was pretty much self-inflicted. And once you point those things out, you know, all you can do is get better. How about um, the following week? I mean, this is a game everybody remembers, especially because you had such a huge game, UCLA. Uh, Coach Davis diving in the water. Yeah, the, nah, I don't remember. You know that one? Yeah. UCLA, UCLA game. Um, you know, you had 299 yards rushing. That was sort of the big breakout for you. What, what, how do you go from such a bad game against Syracuse to beating a team that was on its way to play for the national championship? Well, I think that was the motivation. You know, we played so bad, nobody gave us a chance. We were total underdogs, you know, and, and, and when you have nothing to lose, that's when you go out swinging, you know. So we went out swinging. We was like, okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna go out, we're gonna go out swinging. And we had a lot of things happen that to where you can look that like you find good in every situation. I think that's that game, you know, James Jackson, he actually got something happened where he wasn't able to play and we lost a couple of players and that was gonna finally be my opportunity to show that I can carry the load, you know, and I got a chance to actually carry the ball. You know, it's one of the things you wish for. You know, as, as a as a ball player and as a running back, you're like, man, I just want to get my hands on the ball more. But being that you're at the University of Miami, you're loaded with football players and good running backs, you don't get that opportunity. And so I had to make it make the most of that of that opportunity right there. And during that day, you know, we knew we were playing against a team that that was pretty much vulnerable. You know, the, the schedule got changed, so they were just thinking it was going to be a cake while we had just got beaten by 50, 60 points the week before. But they had to come to, they had to, come to our stadium, you know. And when, when you come to the, to the Orange Bowl, anything can happen. And it usually works out in the University of Miami favor. What, what do you remember from that game? Is there one play, one moment that, that sticks out? And, you know, you ended up with 299 yards, not, three, not over that 300 hump. You had gotten over the 300, lost a couple, but... Is there one play that really stands out out of that whole game? Out of, out of the whole game, the thing that that I enjoy the most about that game is my last carry ever in the Orange Bowl was a touchdown. You know, and that's the best way to end a career at the University of Miami in the Orange Bowl before it's going to be tore down and collapsed. There's no more Orange Bowl. You know, that's the last play that I had. You know, was that touchdown that actually took us over the top. 
you left early. Uh, you, you ended up after the bowl game leaving early. How tough of a decision was it for you to, to leave the guys that you came in with behind, obviously for the NFL, but, but you know, leaving you behind a year early? Well, it's one of those things where, you know, you – you know, you know what you're in it for. You know what you got to do. You know that the school was in that that we they was in a good position. That you had good back sitting right there. And for me, it was time. You know, I don't think there was no better time than right then and there. You know, I knew I would probably be sacrificing a national championship and all the the great wins that were were to come. But for the program, you know, I think we did our we did our job. We did what we were supposed to do. And I don't think there was no other time for me to stay around there. And and I always stayed in touch with everybody, so that was one thing I knew. <laughs> you gotta do that. <laughs> uh, one guy in your 2G class, we gotta touch on Al Blades. You came in with him, uh, another emotional leader on the defensive side, but also for the team. What, what do you remember about Al? Oh man, rest in peace, rest in peace, Al Blades, man. You know, Al Blades, he was the heart of the 2G click, man. I'm talking about Al Blades was everything that you want in a, in a ball player, you know. You're talking about if you're going to go to fight with somebody, you go with Al Blaze. I'm talking about if you go anywhere and Al Blaze there, you just better be ready to strap your shoes on because no telling what's going to happen because he is Miami University. He is what you want. And the 2G click, man, that's one of our greatest members. You, you were talking about uh, you know how we used to go before the bowl games, everywhere we went, every bowl game we went to. You guys, like a little, not an altercation, but it yeah. was something. It was something. Yeah. It was Al doing that, or or just the team in general. Yeah, it was more, it was more dates, but once it got started, they just they were doing it up. Um, oh, yeah, it was so good. You, you sort of, I'll just say the fact, you sort of started the tradition again of coming back to the U after you left to train in the off seasons instead of staying in, in Indianapolis at the time. What did it mean for you to, to come back and help the guy, running backs that were still at school um, and, and, and continue that? Well, I had to come back, you know, and plus, you know, I, I really didn't get a chance to enjoy the, the college life. You know, I was only there two and a half years. And so it was just natural for me. For that's where I wanted to be. I was in the pros, but I'm in the pros with a with a locker room full of people that's 30 years old, and I'm 20 years old. So naturally, you're gonna go back to your roots and the University of Miami. You know that's where I was gonna be at. You know there's no better place for me, and that's where my friends were at, and that's where comfort zone was at. You know, so I made I made it a point of emphasis to make sure that I'm back at this school nonstop. And Coach 